Have you heard? Metro by T-Mobile now includes Amazon Prime. Yes, enjoy the best of shopping and entertainment, movies, TV shows, music, free shipping, and much more. All included for just $40 per line for three lines. All on the T-Mobile network. Discover the smarter way. Metro by T-Mobile. That's genius. One offer per account. Offer subject to change. $12.99 per month value. Offer valid for new Amazon Prime members. Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus some T-Mobile customers. Video at 480p. Capable device required. See store for details and terms and conditions. Welcome to Aquarium Radio at AquariumRadio.com, and I'm your host, Janet Carolesson, with my co-host, Karen Christine Patrick, and Dr. Sasha Lesson, unfortunately, has a flat tire on his bike, and he is making his way home, and hopefully he'll be here before we get too far into the show. And today, we interview a very special guest and dear friend, Eric Dadmar. And Eric received his BA in Fine Arts from UCLA in 1986, but kept studying his favorite topics and chose his concentrations to be in three areas, Indian, Pre-Columbian, and Islamic art history. He also had a video company in Santa Monica excuse me, for six years, producing the 1989 classic Pilates video, Kerala, 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 Kerala. In addition to producing industrial videos for Evian Water France, living in Los Angeles, Santa Monica, for eight years, he met many interesting people from around the world. He had a chance to speak with me off the record and even spoke with the Dalai Lama about the hollow earth, and it was called Shambhala. <clears throat> I got a tickle. Eric grew up in Iran, visiting many ancient sites and seeing monuments with cuneiform writing, orbs with wings, anthropomorphic animals looking humanoid, flying rocks, and jinn. Some of his relatives are Persian, Sufi, Dervish mystics who taught him how things really work and what protection is necessary before traveling and setting out projects. When he came back to America in 1971, he soon entered the gifted program, which included being tested at Lawrence Livermore and Stanford Research Laboratories. This gifted class was tested for psychic ability, and their DNA was analyzed and stored. Let's just say he's still figuring out what is really going on there. Eric took college classes at 12 years of age at the same time he was in elementary school. And I'm going to go back to his long bio. Hold on one second while I get to it. Right here it is. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I have a long bio on AquariumRadio.com, and unfortunately Aquarium Radio is down for another couple of days. But it might be up later today. Who knows? So, Thank Eric, you, Janet. Uh, I didn't expect you to read all of it. Well, I just want to get the interesting parts. I mean, everything's interesting, but I do want to tell people that you're now, uh-huh. um, you know, in all these conferences. I see you kind of being a moderator. Uh, what do they call that? The um, the uh, MC, the host, and the MC. And I, yes. <laughs> I'm a host and MC. I'm also I'm a co-creator of of five D events with Saeed David Farman and. We've done, you know, that's where I met you, and the first time mm-hmm. I spoke in Orange County, and then we were doing shows every year, and then we built, um, we became more popular and had to go to a three-day weekend, and then we had to do it twice mm-hmm. a year, and then we bought another day and made it four-day show, and then we did a five-day show, and it was like amazing. And wow. we had a lot of speakers, yeah. And then after the five-day one, we came back down. That was last September. And then we came back uh-huh. to the four-day one in April. So um, I, I called it, I coined the term 5D events. And I asked my friend of in 5D if it was okay to use um, that because it's very oh. close. And if, and I invited him to our conferences, and, and he 
he's very sweet and he's embarrassed to get up on stage and talk, but I love his information. And but it's t- it's uh-huh. not the same, but it's it's the same topics, but not the same person. But um, that's uh, Greg Prescott, and, and uh, um, I think I, I I got it right. I hope I'm, I hope I said the right name right. Anyway, I I want to say that um, in five D is is a good is a good. I get a lot of good information on there. But um, we're five D events. Like event. Yeah, and when's your yeah. next one? The next one, you know, we we were we've been doing them in Los Angeles for um, three, four years, or five years, uh-huh. and I lost count. Probably four years, maybe. And and <laughs> I think I think he was scared I was going to go do my own show, you know, because really all I needed is a projector. Uh-huh. But I love working with him. He's been my friend for. Say David Farman of of AlchemyEvents dot com and NewHumanityMovement dot com and he's got an Alien Shift dot com, a excellent website. That's how I reconnected uh-huh. with him. I kept I kept meeting him in the eighties. You know, my dad's Iranian and I speak Farsi, and my mom's Norwegian, and I do speak a little. Uh-huh. I under, my Farsi is much better. And uh, I uh, kept meeting this Persian guy at these UFO events in L.A. You know, and I'd meet him. I'd say, Oh, you Persian. Uh-huh. Because how'd you know? You know, and I'd talk to him. We'd meet each other, and then I'd forget about him. And then I'd go to the next conference, and I would see him. He'd look a little different, and I'd say, "Oh, you're Persian." And he said, "I met you," you know, and, and we would laugh. Mm-hmm. And, and and so I kept seeing him at events because I kept going to all these UFO events. L.A. was having. I was trying to ever since I was a kid. I I've been interested in UFOs, and I knew that something was going on. And I was trying to tell my parents. They're lying about what they found on the moon, and my parents were thought uh-huh. it was crazy. They're looking at me, and they're like I don't know what I'm talking about. And but I knew they were lying, and 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 uh, so I was always interested in UFO stuff and, and space and you know whatever. What did you and think so they were lying about? And, and they, they were lying about, about what they found. The I was I was waiting for I, disclosure to happen in '69. I want to bring in Karen. I want to bring in Karen real quick, just so oh, she's yes. on board, right? So, okay, and then we'll we'll do our roundtable. So, Karen, I just want to make sure you're there. Hi, Karen. Oh, I'm there. there. I am there. I'm very okay. excited. The more the things that we've talked about before, and what uh, Eric has just said right now, I'm like out of my tree, excited because he hit two topics near and dear to my heart about. Uh, being in the gifted program in California, it turns out we were both in that same program probably two to three years apart. I have to check the dates, but I think it was about two years apart, maybe three. I was in 68, you were in 71. And, boy, we have a lot to talk about about that. But the other part of this was the the thing about the moon, because as a lot of our listeners know, and you may not, might not know, Eric, is that for the last year, since last October, uh, my partner and I, we've been working with Ken Johnston, who had an original first and second generation photo of the Apollo program. And wow. uh, some of the people in the photo lab, where he worked in the, he worked in multiple positions, but he worked in the photo lab, uh, himself and some other people literally saw what was on the moon in the NASA photographs. And, of course, there's been this big cover-up to cover those things up, and we've been working with Ken to get that material out. So yeah. you you and me are in sync about uh, both what Excellent. what they were trying to what they were trying to do with gifted program what they were trying to accomplish, as well as what was going on during the I mean yesterday was the anniversary right of landing on the moon and the first landing yeah. on the moon we, we did a show, show yesterday. yesterday. Yes, we did. Wow. So I want to go back it's, to what you were saying, Eric. I'll uh, uh-huh. just interrupt you for a moment because uh, I wanted to bring in. Uh, Karen, that, no, that's wonderful. We, 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 I, so I like to ironic roll with the, that we did roll with this it. show. We did this show yesterday, right? So now <laughs> you're about to, and I just want to make sure she's on board, so tell us about why you thought they were lying. What were they lying about? I, I expected them to introduce us to the people living on the moon uh, and and the space mm-hmm. beings, you know, and and what uh you know what they weren't and, and there was there was they weren't showing us what was going on and you know later in life I met Stanley Kubrick and he told me um that he produced the the moon landing and and he said he couldn't talk about it you know uh, uh, officially you know on you know on the record but 
you know, off the record. And I met the astronauts too. When I when I lived in L.A., I met everybody. I, I worked at the movie split theaters in Century City, and we were showing the right stuff. And the real five of the real astronauts came to, you know, so I got to talk to them off the record. And and they, you know, they were telling me that, um, they they saw some divine beings of light flying around the vessel and and there's no doubt about it and and but whether they flew to the moon or not i couldn't get an answer um they weren't basically they they didn't weren't allowed to go there they didn't want them on the moon and and i think that um Actually, it's the Fourth Reich, uh, the Nazis, because there's a Nazi-shaped um, uh, building that holds six million people on the moon that you can see in, in some of those photos. If you type in on YouTube Stonehenge on Moon and Mars, you can see a lot of nice pictures. And then there's another, another nice one, 100 pictures you put on, on the moon, and, and you'll see a lot of – you know. Uh, Art history is where the secrets are preserved, you know, because the books usually get burned. But in the art, you see, you know, when I look at these sculptures and, and structures on the moon and Mars, you can see they're built just like the megalithic structures here, incorporating pi and and aligning it to the summer solstice and, and you know, Orion's belt and, and all these things. And, and, you know, there's no doubt about it. They're the same builders. They're using the same technology, and, and there's a there's a commonality around the world. Um, you know, bef- um, there had to be communication around the world because, you know, even in the Grand Canyon, there's a, it's called Memphis, where they have a, you know, Egyptian style, uh, you know, um, um, stuff there, you know, that's hidden underwater. Right. So, so we're, uh, Dr. Lad said, and I'm sorry he's not here, but we're, we're, uh, Connecting the dots for the Anunnaki, and to go into their story, oh, yeah, they were yeah. a global society, and they were both on the moon and Mars. And you know, there's uh, extensive stories about how they would go to the moon uh, because it had greater clarity, and they would be looking for uh, signs of the return of the Biru because it wasn't an exact science; it would change with each passing because there was a, um, a, a solar system effect on the different bodies upon one another, which Altered the, uh, you know, the the return cycle. So, so you're saying the moon? What do you say? say Google this uh, Stonehenge on Moon. Go- oh, Google when you go to YouTube. There's a window box. Type in Stonehenge okay. on Moon and Mars, and and then YouTube okay. videos will pop up, and then you choose, you know, which one you look on the right, and that's the, you see what you know right. what you see. You know, luckily doing all these conferences, and then also going to UFO. You know, I was saying I was meeting. I kept meeting Saeed David Farman at all these events, going to all these. I've been going to conferences, you know, uh, since the '80s, and right. I met I met Jim Mars, you know, like every decade. I would meet him, and growing up, you know, later and getting older and meeting all these guys, and they'd remember me. And then finally, I'm, I'm working with them as a speaker and get talking with them on, a, on a, with a panel. So it's awesome. And and the things that I learned in school and shared with them, they're sharing with people now exactly the way I described it to them. Like when I talked about uh, corporatism and fascism with the way Mussolini was explaining it and the way I explained it to, to Jim way back then. And, and he says that story just the same way. And I told him, I said, you know, hey, that was my teacher talking, you know. and and But he's awesome. If you read, read Alien Agenda – you learn about the moon and, and that it's impossible for an object to be where it is and, and it, it, for it to be, have the same side facing us the whole time and and um, and then being the size it is and eclipsing the sun perfectly. And also he said when the um, when, when they put the seismic uh, um, mm-hmm. earthquake monitors on the moon and then the, they jettison the the Pulsion jet, uh, the gas tanks. They struck the moon like a gong, and it reverberated for hours. You know, and, and it, right. it, it tell it was hollow. And see, they left the equipment on the moon where they pumped out the inner stuff, the inner mantle out. So that's why it's hard, and and, and so it's hollow um, structure that that is really a big spaceship, just like this Nibiru. Um, mm-hmm. company. They say it's a spaceship, you know. And and I always thought when I was a kid in Iran.
on looking at Persepolis and the and the the winged disc, I always thought it was just a UFO, um, like a little UFO, you know, with wings and or a disc, you know, flying, you know, like the UFOs, like the small ones you see on cartoons and stuff as a kid. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it's the it is the, it is a spaceship, but it's a big planet sized spaceship, and the wings. See, when when you have a planet coming towards you, there's a red shift, and so you're going to have red in the f- or in blue, or actually it's mm-hmm. going to be blue. It's going to be a blue shift. It's going to be blue compressed um, because it's coming towards you, and then when it goes away, it's going to have the red shift, and and so this is what we're this is what it is. It's a, that symbol that you see in all these symbols that is is Nibiru. Everything is right. describing right. this planet coming back every 3,600 and something years on the average, 57, 3,657 years on the average. It comes by around here, and every time it comes back, it wrecks havoc on the planet. You know, you get these three-mile waves on the shorelines, and you get all the active volcanoes become active, and, and you have the, and the a pole shift happens. But for the first time in the universe, there's going to be a people shift the same time as the pole shift. So the planet is shifting. And what makes that happen? People. I've talked about this, Eric. This is something people that... People shift uh, on other shows. So I, was, I want to understand what your theory is, is why this time of all times... This time of all times is different. Well, uh, the pole shift. That's what yeah, I'm saying. What's different this time? What's mm-hmm. different this time is there has to be some kind of balancing event in the universe, I think. This is my own, I could be wrong, but this is my understanding. There has to be some kind of balancing, like like putting your car in neutral before you shift. And and I think they're about to um, make a fa- like a phase shift when they're shifting from one element to another, like from a, like when water goes from a liquid to a gas, it's making a phase shift. We're making a phase shift from physical realm to a spiritual realm in the higher dimensions. We're making a – so it's very important for us – this is my message, basically. It's very important for us to hold a love vibration of compassion and vibrate mm-hmm. this finer frequency to make the shift with the planet. Otherwise, we'll be sent elsewhere to relearn what we didn't learn. Because it turns out when you get angry, you screw up your body system and you get sick and stress and acidic Mm -hmm. and that causes cancer. But if you laugh for a solid minute and you don't get angry the rest of the day, you will never get sick. And when you laugh and have these finer frequency vibrations of love, you are a super person that's not going to get sick, you know, you're you're going to be healthy right. and, you're, and, you're, and you're vibrating a finer frequency and good things happen to you all the time. You know, I, I do experiments with my my friend that I'm always teaching these things, you know, sharing this information mm-hmm. with and we play backgammon, backgammon and we throw the dice and we have to feel from our heart, you know, what it's going to roll and then we trick each other trying to, you know, get the other guy to roll another number and we play with these concepts and it really works when you believe from your heart see that's where the secret got it wrong it's not think positive it's feel positive from the heart because the heart is Mm -hmm. 100,000 times more powerful than the electrical energy from the brain it's so important to have everything come from the heart except when when you're looking for that women's intuition it has to come from the gut because then you're not being tricked by your brain or your heart you know, because that gut, mm-hmm. you know, Hipp- Hippocrates said um, all illnesses are, are, you know, coming from the gut. So, so you know, you're putting everything into your mouth, and and, and your and it's your gut that you you know. So I want to talk about too later sometime about oil pulling. You know, just be uh, getting the bacteria out of your teeth because you know we have three miles well, of bacteria okay. in each tooth. But but let's stay on well, this let's, topic. Um, yeah, let's let's stay on that. Let's give uh, we're gonna go round table here and let's give Karen. Yes, tell me if I talk too much, please. <laughs> That's okay. No, you're not talking too much, but um we're 
Well, what I like to do in shows is give everybody a chance to talk if they want to talk. They can pass. If you don't have anything to say, just say pass, and, mm-hmm. and the ball will come around to you again. But sometimes we're sitting here on, on the, and we're going, I have something to say, I have something to say that's relevant. And so, uh, so we'll try to keep it like um, maybe <clears throat> three to four minutes and then pass. You can just do it yourself, say, okay, I've talked enough, let me go back. Because we can always go back to the topic, you know, we've got two hours and yeah, we're only 19 that's minutes great. Anyway, so. I, I just like, I'm all into the flow. I, I want everything to flow and Excellent. being a surfer of the universe, you know, and so. So Karen, we're going to pass the talking stick to you. And, um, and so you can okay. have a chance to address what Eric's been talking about because Eric's got a lot of yeah, really, I, really uh, wonderful information. Go ahead. I would like to flow backwards and and because uh, I got terribly excited about finding another kid, you know, that was oh, yeah. in the programs that I was I at. Program. And I, yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, you know, my, my partner and I both were what we call program kids, and we've met quite a few program kids because they have been testing and experimenting on children through this public school system for quite a long time. Yep. Um, and different kids grew up with different programs. Um, for myself, you and I are right in there in the same you know, generation uh, to where my uh, inculcation into the public school program, and, they, and overtly they called it Project Talent, and it was implemented in the California school system. My school might have Project been a Project Talent? Project Talent. It was a state program, which they were basically... I've never heard that. Tr- well, they're trying to identify gifted and talent, talented children on an overt level for helping them get extra educational support to become college students and and to do well in college and to go on into the professions in mathematics and science and all that, Yes, yes. I I heard of Rapid Learners, RL, and I heard of MGM, Mentally Gifted Minded. Those are the two terms I used, I I heard. Um, And then then it became gifted. First, it was rapid learners and then mentally gifted minded and then or I don't know what order it came in and then there was the rapid learners. Mentally gifted Right. Learners. I didn't hear those terms exactly but I had a brush with all of that. Um uh, I what, I do believe there was a uh, I was Sacramento. in Concord, California. I was in where? Concord, so not far. Concord, Concord California. Okay, wow. Not far at all. And that was Sacramento, uh, California. And I believe it was uh supported through Stanford uh, Research Institute. Um, yep. I was told yep. by an insider that we've talked about before on the show, A.R. Borden, that he called them the Palo Alto Boys. So Palo Alto would be Stanford Research Institute, yep. who was, you know, they were the ones kind of developing the program. And there was two parts to it. One was an overt identification of gifted and talented kids, like I said, for science, math, et cetera, you know, coming into the space age and to the Cold War era where, we were really competing with what we thought, you know, the Russians for, you know, intellectual prowess. That was the, sort of right. the overt thing. And then the uh, sub, subvert thing or the subversive part of it was that by now, by the time that this program was implemented, during Project uh, Paperclip, where we brought the Nazi scientists over who were both rocket scientists and covertly they were also anti-gravitational scientists, but they also bought, uh, brought uh, mind control people as well. And I know at least one MK. conclave, yeah, MK Ultra, mind control, because the word is K when you spell it in German. Right, exactly. And I believe, I believe that the center of that program was uh, identified as China Lake, California, due to various, you know, yep. research I went through. And they basically were, uh, you know, this was an era of, okay, we're, we're still in a cold war. We're not going to, like, lob bombs at each other, but what else can we do to each other? So this was a development of remote viewing and, uh, you know, uh, remote influencing, um, psychic warfare, uh, the super soldier program. There was a lot of yep. different programs that came out of all that. But yep. basically they started screening children, school children, for psychic ability. And also one other factor is, is often overlooked is uh, they wanted compliant children. So they wanted obedient, compliant. They didn't necessarily want rebels without a pause. You know what I mean? Right. They that wanted would be the kids. Rebel. <laughs> well, they wanted the ones that, that would sit there and then, and do their work, and and they were looking for compliance as well, not just um, not just 
the psychic abilities, which does sort of weirdly come with the rebellion, you know, because you, the reality that you see and other people see is two different it things. Does. They, they, they took us on a field trip to Stanford Research Lab, and they tested us for psychic ability through this big, thick um, glass, you know, whatever it was, plexiglass. Or, and it, it, uh, the EST cards, right? Right. <laughs> and, then, and then they showed a symbol that wasn't on there. It was a star, oh, and, and I said, "I said it's a star." They said, "But the star isn't one of these choices." I said, "I know." Wow. That's what you have, and and I was right, you know, and it was funny, but I'll never forget oh, that. And then they also took our DNA. I won't forget that. And then and then I asked some of my. I'm still friends with a lot of these gifted students, you know, because some of them did go to network for NASA. Of and, course, yeah. Other things, yeah, and and they were they don't remember. The field trip. Some of them don't remember the field trip, and, and yeah, like, wow. I, I, they I also have took a us to Lawrence memory. Livermore. Yeah, Lawrence I Livermore have a spotted Latin. memory too. Oh, that isn't that makes sense. I had a spotted yeah. memory as well. Now, the the upshot of my experience, there was one one thing that happened to me. Also, I remember quite clearly, is that I was uh, sent to the vice principal's office, and I thought I was in big trouble. You know, being a little right. kid, oh, I'm going to the vice principal's office. But the guy that was sitting at the desk was some professorial kind of guy in a bad tweed suit and kind of rumple in, looking over the top of his glasses at me. And he performed a full uh, psychological test uh, uh, against my parents' knowledge or wishes, uh, as well as he did use those ESP cards and did the Rosarch test as well. And I don't know why I was being singled out in that way or if the other kids were getting the same treatment, but when my parents found out about that particular incident and a few others, they just totally got upset. Now, for some yeah. reason or another, my father was quite conversant in uh, the idea of mind control. He's a member of an organization called the John Birch Society, and the people who came to visit our yeah. house were people who were in the military and very concerned about the spread of communism. And so right. they were talking about mind control and, uh, you know, what was going on in China, the Manchurian candidate syndrome, you right. know, that sort of thing. So he, he you know, talked to to me and my, after, especially after this incident, my parents pulled me out of the public school and put me in parochial school. Now, one thing I want to mention, because you said the Nazis, I want to tell you what happened next real quick. Right. What happened next was there was a gentleman visiting my parents' political meetings, and uh, he, he suddenly showed up one day at my, my bus stop coming back from the parochial school, and it completely freaked wow. my parents out. They found out later he was a member of the Nazi party, and yeah. also that his wife worked for the school in the office, so she had access to my records. So yeah. it seems to me there was some attempt to kidnap us or observe us uh, to, to you know, as a part of that. So then I subsequently became aware of how much involvement that the tape clip Nazis and their, fa- their families and their, you know, cohorts yeah. uh, were involved in these covert programs because, of course, this was, you know how we've developed a lot of three-letter agencies and, and rem- yep. all the remote everything. viewing programs, everything. Yep. So this is all interconnected, and it's centered out of that, you know, Bay Area cluster of scientists. Uh, yep. And I'm just fascinated you know all that because I feel like I, when I tell people that, they look at me like I have a you know, you know what's amazing? head. <laughs> what's really amazing, I am so lucky. My, I think I'm calling my book. Um, I'm so lucky, my autobiography, and I keep saying that I finish it, and, and I don't. But uh, but it's when I was a grocery clerk in Santa Monica, I had the weekly world news on my check stand with the alien shaking the president's hand. So I would show the customers. Yes, I remember that one. Yes. <clears throat> one. One day, one day, this beautiful lady came through. She said, "I'm, I am Carol Rosen. I am, I was the secretary of Werner von Braun, and she became, mm-hmm. she was my customer." A customer, you know, and we became friends in the 80s, <laughs> and she would, we would talk about all these things, and she would tell me how, you know, he would talk, you know, to her, you know, she was an elementary school teacher with beautiful legs, and and she said she didn't really know about, you know, these things, and she was supposed to get up and talk about, you know, Fairchild Industries and, and whatever, and, and so he said, don't worry, I'm going to be talking to you. And some kind of technology, he was talking to her in her head. And she didn't know how it oh, was wow. this day. But he was talking, and then she would, you know, say what he was saying. And answer. he would answer the questions, kind of. And but So I was lucky oh, to just get in on this. But, but just from studying Operation Paperclip, let me tell you, 
the, we got the worst of the, of the scientists. The best, the top scientists disappeared in Antarctica with 100 nuclear submarines with, with Hitler. Hitler didn't die. He went to South, right. he went to Antarctica because yeah. he was seen in Argentina and with his daughter, and and he was also seen in Oregon living in America too. So the Nazis didn't lose the, the Germans didn't lose the war. Okay, um, no. I, I don't. I, they came to America and they 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 said we're not going to lose the next one, and they they just took everything and hid. And and I think that Maria Orsek. Um, and you know the Vril girls, the the secret, mm-hmm. the long-haired mystics. The, oh yeah, the, long-haired girls. Yeah. Who worked with Victor Schaub, Schauberger to reverse yeah. engineer the you know uh, UFOs and stuff. And then another yeah. interesting fact: BMW made the engines for the for the flying saucers. So you know that's why they're really so awesome cars. And oh well, yeah, see, that's so, the best so, way to win a war is to just back yeah. off and take it over covertly. So. Yeah, they exactly. stopped the, the bombing and the devastation that way and the killing people that way, and mm-hmm. they took over. They, they basically yep. took over the United States, and we're, but it's all the Anunnaki. If you go beyond that, yes. it's the Anunnaki, and which factions are being contacted or work with uh, which extraterrestrials, right. and they have all these alliances, and, and, you know, I, yes, don't and they split. I don't know anybody that's figured it out 100%. You know, well, it, well it, let me tell confusing. you, it's easy. It's really easy. Actually. Okay. It's it's the it's the Nazi Zionists. I mean, it's the Zionists versus the Fourth Reich. You got the Fourth Reich Nazi reptilians, and you got uh-huh. the Zionists, and 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 then the other aliens, the lower dimensional beings that work with our government. They pick sides, either one or the other, but it's a split. There's a split. It, I work for the state for food, drug, and radiation safety, and we regulate. We're supposed, mm-hmm. to, we're supposed to regulate reg- radiation, but we're not telling people about Fukushima. They just raise the safe limits. Really, we should be warning mm-hmm. people about Fukushima radiation, and we should be telling them about chemtrails and, and, and the manganese and the barium and strontium and nano aluminum that. And you know, damaging, attacking our calcium, but it's it's all attacking our DNA to make us transhuman. Because being human is a powerful thing, and our heart now, chakra hasn't been taken over. Huh? Okay. Transhuman, what is making going us to happen physically and psychically. See, everything they do is attacking our DNA. When they do this. Uh-huh. Well, they attack our DNA with the GMO food, and they because right. it changes your DNA, it rewrites it, and also the chemtrails, the chemicals they put in the in the trails that they're spraying in the air, the chemicals uh-huh. they they recombine. They're, it's nanotechnology that is alien uh-huh. AI, artificial intelligence, and it's it's predatory and it's pathogenic. It's it's not. Nice. It, it, it wants so to take over your body. Us? What I, what it, I well, it gets in your body and your bloodstream. change as a society. Uh, it's pretty horrific. I, I was looking at a uh, 1973 Star Trek conference, you know, in New York City, and right. just looking back through, you know, our media and different. We were different people back then. Yeah. There was uh, our hearts open. We were. You know, we, we try to explain it in simple and certain ways, like, oh, they were so innocent and so naive. Right. But we, this is a, right now, I, there's a lot of mean people out there. Like, the average people are getting um, pissy and mean and, uh, I don't know, just changing. They're changing. The personality is changing. It's the manganese. See, that's what Prince was talking about. If you type in on YouTube, uh, Prince, Dick Gregory, mm-hmm. and Chemtrails, a YouTube pops up and where they talk about Prince was a ge- was a genius. Okay, I met I met mm-hmm. Prince too. I, I I went with I went out with this uh, Playboy Centerfold Devil in the Vasquez, and she was she introduced me to Prince, and he was a genius, mm-hmm. and, and he uh, you know he beat the record company by changing his name and, and using common law because he learned about it quickly, you know, and but mm-hmm. he talked about the manganese. See, in the manganese factory in Australia, they have the highest incidence of of domestic violence and and you know violent people you know around the factory because they're inhaling it's airborne and it's pissing them off and the manganese mm-hmm. is, is what's 
what's pissing every it's, they spray that in the chemtrails too because there's the Roman edict to divide and conquer and if you can get everybody to fight right. against each other you're going to be it's easier to control them see because they're you know you get them to piss each other off see our governments we we pretend uh, that the Russians and the Chinese and secretly they all work together okay it's all BS okay right. they all work together it, it's it, it's a big show. And, and w- well, Dr. Lesson just got home. Uh, let me I just, just heard. Say, don't, get the, don't get the splitter and the other headset, and I'll put you on the show. Okay, he said they'll get it from the other room. Good, good. That is. So we're going to pull in Dr. Lesson. But this is Excellent. important. I want you to kind of summarize what we're talking about right now. Because yeah, I, it, I, it is. You know, I'm a therapist, and I just noticed that there's something has changed with personality. It has. In general. It's ramped up. It's being ramped up. See, you've got these smart meters attached to everybody's houses controlling electricity, which are like cell phones going on all the time, making thousands of calls. And the the smartphones also, the smart meters outside your house, the smartphone's in your pocket, and it has 20 different antennas that, that could piss you off too and don't let you sleep. You know, so you have to mm-hmm. take heavy. Du- you, you have to make a, a a Faraday cage. You have to take some heavy duty aluminum, and take some duct tape and tape it on both sides, and then make a fashion yourself an envelope to put your phone in a couple hours before you want to go to sleep, just so you can. Wow. Uh, yeah, just so you can get to sleep nicely without being, you know, and go through your four stages of you know, delta, you know, up to the so you can get the delta stage of sleep with the REM rapid eye movement. And and otherwise you don't get deep sleep and you're not your body has to do dump stuff and and regenerate and recharge otherwise you're not sleeping well so everything is attacking us our DNA really and making us transhuman they, because they don't want us to be human because it's such a powerful thing our heart chakra has not been taken over they've controlled every other chakra but our heart chakra is very powerful it turns out our heart has a hundred thousand times more power electrical power than our brain. So that's why I'm saying my message is have a love vibration of compassion to make the shift because our hearts haven't been taken over and that's how we rule. We we transmute it with love. We we vibrate the shit out of it to make it shine, you know? So we're bouncing around well, a lot of topics in. here. Go ahead. Let me bring Dr. Hi Dr. Sasha. Sorry to interrupt. Wait, he's got to put his headphone on. Come on over here, honey, okay. and put your headphone on. Uh, and we're having an incredible conversation with Eric. Okay. And, you know, come on. <laughs> Hold on. He's sitting down. Um, so it's so frustrating to get flat tires on a bicycle. You know, I ride my bike to work, and, and I come mm-hmm. home for lunch, and, and I was getting a lot of flats. And so I went out and bought the best tires and they're called armadillos and Crossfire, and, and and then I put a special liner on the rim and a liner on the inside of the tire, and so and then a heavy duty tube. You know, I don't want. Can you hear me? Okay. I don't now want a flat. He goes through this periodically. Yeah. Okay. So now yeah. the gang's all here. We've got Eric and Karen and Janet and Sasha. And um, Eric, we were just talking about how the different things in the environment are making people kind of pissy. Off, yeah, pissing us off because yeah, it's ahead. the Roman Wait. edict to divide and conquer. Go ahead. And so, hi, hi, Sasha. Um, hi, I, I just want to, yeah, um, we were talking was talking about the chemtrails and how they're using artificial intelligence, nano aluminum, to recombine mm-hmm. in our body to form chips. But they also put manganese to piss us off. Because it turns out at the manganese factory in Australia, there's a high incidence of domestic violence and and people getting mad. And Prince was talking about it with Dick Gregory on with if you type in Dick Gregory Prince and chemtrails on YouTube box in the YouTube little window, it, the video pops mm-hmm. up where they actually they talk about it, you know it and, and manganese and and you know I learned in the 80s about. Dynomat and General Electric spraying this stuff, and it was just barium, strontium, and nano aluminum. And nano aluminum is very hard to get. You know, only high government agencies can get it, and it's not even from this planet. It, it, it's and it's very microfine dust. 
But now it's even worse. It's like further down, like Thera, Theta. I forgot what what levels. I have to. I haven't looked at it for a while. But it's it's basically smart dust. It's even finer than the than the microfine dust. So they're really getting into your bloodstream and crossing the the blood brain barrier. And they're getting into your head. So you're getting these, some people are getting, people came to me with these morgulons and these wires. They told me, I don't know what this is, Eric, but it's not a hair. It's like a wire coming out of my body. I don't know what it is. And Whoa. And I, yeah. And then I learned about morgulons. And this is the stuff they're spraying in the air. Oh. And you, and we have these things, and they go to your, they go to the spine because they want the nerves and they're smart, see, and they travel. And it's not, it's artificial intelligence, basically, with a brain that recombined in your body. Okay, you inhaled it, and it recombined like a transformer, you know, and it became something. And this is the wow. high-tech shit, this is the high-tech shit they're doing to us. Okay, so. That's like what my I'm, mind talked about the puppet master, that it would come into your right. body and attach to your spine, and and you were basically controlled and manipulated. Right. Now, isn't there a way for the soul, uh, who we truly are at the highest level, to overcome any kind of programming? Look, look like at the, get um, the super out of soldier. The matrix? Yes. Look at the super soldier, Sarah Adams, the beautiful Sarah Adams, Rachel. She mm-hmm. transmuted it with love. You know, she's such a beautiful being, and, and she tra- they pumped her full of black goo, and she transmuted it this artificial intelligence, you know, and and, mm-hmm. and that's how powerful we are, you know, our heart. If you hold your heart pure and you strongly believe in, in God, I don't care what religion, but just a source that we come from that's mm-hmm. God, light, love, knowledge. You know, I had a near-death experience, so I came up with the equation, God equals light, love, knowledge, wisdom, and and I'm strong in the light, you know, So and I know I can't be killed. You know, you'll always wake up somewhere. Um, my friend Laura right. you know, does, <laughs> you know, so, or our friend, our friend Laura, you know, so it's it's very important to be like these these w- women warriors, you know, Laura and Sarah, to hold this mm-hmm. um, strong love vibration of and and transmute anything. You can, love is all you need, and it, it does transmute everything, but you've got to hold it strong. Then it turns out marijuana oil, and, and marijuana oil is a cure for everything. And it's a gift from from God, you know. It's a well. Look at the word cannabis. Canna, cannabis. Canna is canine dog, and bis by two. So two dog star. It comes from Sirius, and Shiva. Oh, it, Shiva brought and, and then in the oldest books on the planet, they're talking about Shiva gift, gifting, you know, two plants, datura, and and marijuana. So it's very important, and you see it in the hieroglyphs and the pyramids, and it turns out that it absorbs radiation. And and it's it, besides being the fastest growing, most efficient plant, you know Henry Ford was using the making using hemp to make the cars, and and it was stronger than steel, and and then Ooh. the oil for the fuel, you know, and and. There used to be a law, you know, Hemp for Victory, the movie Hemp for Victory. It was a law. You had to grow marijuana or hemp during war times because it was so efficient and, and made, you know, they use it for the ropes on the ships and the sails and the, you know, the first money was printed on it. The jeans that they dig up, the old jeans, you can still wear them because they, they're made of hemp and, and they oh, outlast. Wow. Yeah, but the cotton ones we wear, I get a hole in my butt, you know, where the pocket is. I got to get a new one always, you know. And that's planned obsolescence. See, it's it junk. Right. You know, yeah. how, my wife has bought thirty keyboards for a computer. She keeps spilling coffee and junk and whatever. <laughs> I tell her get, you know, don't, it's it's planned that way it, because they they it's cheaper to buy a new computer than fix your old one, and that's terrible. Right. What kind of what kind of waste is that? Can you have you walked into a Target and smelled all that plastic shit? I, I can't. How can you stand it? How can you walk in there and smell all this g- garbage? Doesn't that bother you? Toxic and on many levels. Oh, it's so toxic. Wants to I'm... say something. He's got his hand up. Okay, let's let Sasha talk. 
Go yeah. Ahead. Well, you know, it's it, it's like uh, the the uh, the kid that's uh, digging in the uh, stable. Uh, it's all full of manure, and he keeps digging and digging. And he says, well, you know, with all this shit here, there must be a pony somewhere. And so that I think it's a value <laughs> to take what the contents of what you're irritated about. And, and you know, right. there, yes, there's chemi- there's chemical causes, but look at what is irritating you, and say to yourself, Ir- part that's irritated. Uh, what is it that you want, and why do you want it, and what do you really need? And so even though right. the cause is, is exogenous uh, and unfortunate, there's a, a, a sense that you can use it to, to uh, touch off your irritability and see what the irritated part of you really needs and to integrate that part, too. And when I look at the larger thing, I try to say to myself, how can, how in the world can I embrace the needs of these people that are doing that are uh, poisoning everybody uh, how can exactly. uh, I uh, empathize with them enough so that they're not an other uh, so that I can realize that there's a part of me that can uh, uh, meet them at a need level so that so we can uh, create a synergy rather than Excellent be in point. opposition you know I, I- if people can make a change, and that's an excellent point you bring up, Dr. Sasha, because in my in my neighborhood there's a cleaner, and I told them, I said, I said, how can you, you know, when I leave this cleaner, I'm going down the street, but you guys have to stay here and and smell this chemical. I said, you're moving now. Why don't you shift your stop using chemicals now and do natural? You'll make more money, and you can you can advertise. You won't have to buy this chemical shit. You can use water, and and you will, mm-hmm. and you will save money, and you can say it's better. So they they mm-hmm. changed, and I, they, I changed it. I convinced them to do it, wow. and, and so now they're. So yes, we can make it. You have to speak up. Say you know what? I don't like this shit. I'm not shopping here anymore. I'm not buying this. I don't want this in my food or or whatever. Mm-hmm. You tell them, you know, or, or there's a nice way to do everything. You know, there's a nicer way. It's much better to be polite and say, you know, I'm really concerned about your health. You know, I'm I'm just not going to eat it, and I want you to learn about this. It's ripping a hole in your gut. This genetically modified food, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't you have Randall don't you have leaky gut, gut syndrome? <laughs> Don't you? How was your stomach issue? <laughs> so, you know, and and powder yeah. arco tea kills the fungus. Everybody has candida. See, I don't mean to switch quickly on you, but it's all related to me in my head. Um, uh-huh. and, and basically, we all have wheat guts. We eat um, wheat flour. We have to watch our grains, and and everybody has candida and doesn't realize it. And I learned recently that I was smelling the liquid from my eyes, the fluid, and I could tell that I was eating bread. You know, because I could smell the candida yeasty coming out of my body, um, wanting to wow. come out. You know, you can tell. And my dogs, if they eat um, wheat flour or cat treats that my wife leaves out, they will. He gets hot spots in his paws, and he licks his paws. Wow. And then it's candida, so it's, it affects the ears, the the wax in the ears. So it's all related. Everything, and you just have to look at the common denominator and what what is you know what what you're putting in and and what is doing this. So when it, when they change it with to be genetically modified and break the laws of God and nature and mix plants and animal and don't have your health in mind, and they and and it affects us. We have to watch out. I raise a red flag for the people and say, hey, you know, stay human. Don't change your DNA. You know, don't become transhuman, and because then you lose your power, and you, and then you're easily controlled. Because the best slaves think they're free. They don't want to mm-hmm. kill you. They just want to. They just want to um, change you into a robot, be uh, automaton. You know. So you pay into their system. What do you think about all that? <laughs> what do you think about all that? Okay. Yeah. Gosh, you want to go first, Karen? You want to go first? Oh, let Karen go. She knows a lot more. Karen, uh, we're, we just brought a. I, I can. Yeah, I can. Uh, go, I go on. I just didn't. I just feel bad talking all the time. No, I don't. Oh, you're fine. No, you're the guest. You're, you're cool. You're, yeah. <laughs> she, I know Karen wants to take it back to the to the yes, um, I am. program. Yes, I am. And, well, well, I don't have to be last, psychic for that. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the, the last part of my experience is that program, and that was after my my mother had a dream. She's psychic. She had a dream that they took me away and they brought me back and I was 
myself, but there was a change in me. And it turned out to be an actual thing that happened. And what happened, as I pieced it together later, was when it looked like they weren't going to be able to keep me, my parents were going to move me out of the program, they still had to do something with me because I must have pinged really high on their radar, you know. Mm -hmm. So basically I did have an implant. You were talking about this uh, micro-implant process through Morgellons, but I had an actual, some kind of, piezoelectric kind of thing and the only reason why I know I had it was the day it broke and the day it broke I broke it was uh, when I was uh, about uh, nine years ago oh ten years ago now before I was uh, 45 years old and I, I my high vibration was really low of myself I, oh yeah that was good I like that well, that's funny because the next thing I'm going to say is that I was having this sort of like a tornado in my head where I was coming to a crisis of my belief system that was outside of me, what I was taught, and my own my own experiences. And, and it was like a like a I now just had made, was making the decision to follow my own experiences as my center of how I viewed the world instead of, uh, you know, some outside influence. And uh, it's funny that sound went off because what happened next was at the peak of this uh, crisis, I'd say, I heard a, a sound in my head, in my skull pan. It wasn't like a yeah. like a etheric sound. It was an actual really high-pitched piezoelectric yeah. ping yeah. that went off in my brain, and it echoed around in my skull pan for a while, like you would imagine uh, something, a uh, sound inside a round object. And I was completely disoriented for a few minutes. And then, believe it or not, something akin to a psychic um, read-me file. This went ticka, 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 ticka in my brain. And I had, I, it downloaded to me what it was. And it downloaded to me that it was a, uh, that this particular implant was given to me to make me defer to authority uh, more readily and to believe my religion and not to question anything. And up yeah. until that moment, that's exactly what I was doing. I was confused yeah. because authority was telling me the opposite of what my experience was. Yeah. And my deferment to authority, particularly to religion, meant that I was being beat up in relationships in my, you know, I was married to a Christian guy and he beat me up. And it was like, uh, I got to stick around for that. And my family was saying, uh, you know, my family, but the church was saying, yeah, you got to stick with that. And, you know, they, 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 my experience of being abused and what I was being told to do about the abuse did not jive with self-love, of taking care of myself uh-huh. and not allowing myself to be abused. And that crisis literally broke that thing and revealed it. And I don't know if you've heard of anybody else who had that, but that was... Yeah, it was actually, I, was, actual, I had a chip, too. And my, ah. uh, what I did was I put a neodymium magnet on it, and and because I, I heard that, you know, the, but I had heard that somebody told me uh, what one of my uh, like psychic friends said that I had already transmuted it and uh, into yeah. a heart shape, into a heart shape. And oh, interesting. They, yeah, and they, the, the several of the women that I work with of the of the paranormal group, um, uh, you know, all were analyzing and took. Um, trait markers and wrote on my hand and did impressions and and you know we, we work with people that actually remove them at two oh and fantastic. actually John Lear I wondered well, if Roger I Lear was going to Roger Lear before ah, he died interesting. He oh me, yeah oh yeah he wanted me to get an X ray and, and send it to him and I did that and and he said it's not going to show anything and I and it didn't and but yeah. he said but I have to have that X ray and and then he died after that they got oh. him so, but there we work with other people too. There's Yvonne Smith who who does that, and, and then the, we have a friend who who does that too. Here, um, I'm going Good. to do a conference awareness production in Sacramento, and, and oh my so, gosh, I'd love to know more. And, and I have to say, I want to add one other thing uh-huh. is that later on I became aware of the particular program. It was actually initiated through a particular religious group who were were very high up into the three-letter agencies. And basically one of the emphases for this particular implant uh, was the fact that they were upset that in the 60s was, of course, the youth movement and the women's movement, and they were losing kids, young people and women, to these movements because of their microtrol program was not very conducive to the health of young people and women. And so they literally 
uh, implemented allowing this program to be used on their members. And I also found out close ties with cults. So some of the cults that developed, like the People's yeah. Temple and some of those, were deeply tied to uh, the experimentation that was allowed on humans that was partially human introduced by these mind control programs from the Nazis, but as well yeah. as alien technology. And of course, since, since they they were experimenting on individuals and groups at the time, and then finally escalated it now up to everybody, right? They can breathe, you know, breathe in atmosphere now, right? So yeah. they're, they're, they've changed their tactics, and I think they are battling one of the, like you said, the most amazing transformations in the world, and that is our human, uh, you know, ascension process, which is like right on schedule for a species to uh, to go to the next level together, and that's why they've they've upped the timetable, and they're literally throwing the everything at us, lobbing every. Thing they can at us. Yeah. I don't believe it's working. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't be having it's this not. conversation. And why it's yeah. not working is is we're in a new energy. We're in a new time and space. And there's a new shift. Yeah. There's a higher vibration. And what doesn't work is going to fail. And and yeah. they don't resonate at this high frequency. And they're they've lost their leaders. And they're running around in circles. We're going to see the monster eat itself basically. Just when we think yeah. we're about to, mm-hmm. have, we've had enough, you know. And I really don't think there will be elections, and I, I think that um, they're going to really try to – because you're seeing them do all these false flag operations, you know, because oh, yeah. there were bullet stickers on that truck. And if that white truck is plowing through, first there were bullet hole, bullet hole stickers. Then when they claimed, you know, there was a reflection in the stickers because the gla- it, in the reflection, there, it was not supposed to be a reflection because this glass is supposed to be broken. But if you look at the seats in those pictures, because now we have high resolution and everything, they have to screw it up on purpose, you know, because you're seeing okay. it clearly. You could see the, the upholstery, was, and then there were no exit holes. So then they went and took a crowbar and hammered it into the, you know, where the bullet holes were. But then they made, stupidly made rectangular marks. Okay, now what idiots? And, and so they're getting sloppy. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then the truck, and niece, if you're, I mean, if you've ever hit a squirrel or a cat or or dog or something, I mean, that's something terrible. But there's going to be blood splattered all over your car. Okay, now if you're pl- plowing into a bunch of people, don't you think there's going to be one drop of blood in the car? And then, and then those exit holes. Where's the exit holes? Those bullets don't just stop in midair in that glass after hitting the glass. You know, they, they have to come out somewhere. And so it was all BS. No. Was mannequins. They dumped mannequins everywhere. You know, you could see the mannequins. And and, and then the blood. I, I worked in the emergency room. You know, blood, it, it oxygenates and it turns dark. Yeah. But but just like the Boston false flag, the blood was just, oh, yeah. you know, brightly red, bright red. You know, it was BS. And, you know, I did martial arts with, with these... Uh, with these mercenaries, and I watch them um, train, and I know these guys, Blackwater and Eric Prince of the Amway Corporation family, and and, and all these, uh, these, these are, fa- these are these guys are the guys that are showing up at these operations, you know, with the black and tan, you know, and the photographic evidence is obvious, so we're seeing the courts lie in front of us, and, and because it was black, the difference was between black and white, backpack in a Boston, you know, because they, they picked on those judo kids, Russian brothers, when, when it wasn't them, it was the it was the hit team. So it's obvious that they're, they're doing all this and ramping it up, but they're losing because they're, this is a new energy and a new time, and it's a finer frequency vibration, and it's a higher, see, there's no selfishness in the higher dimensions. Everybody's considerate, and there's love and compassion. And if you don't vibrate these finer frequencies, it's going to fall apart, and they're going to have to go elsewhere to start over in another dimension. And, right. that, and that's a, basically it, you know. And, and we see. I'm just talking about the humans here are are going to make the shift, but a lot of star seeds like us have made a promise millions of years ago to be here and help with this transition. We were pioneers to set the way, to pave the way. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a strong sense of self-esteem, so I'm not going to be weak. And, and, you know, I was always a different kid. I was the blonde kid in Iran, 
you know, growing up, I was a different kid, and I was the kid who was different in America. When I came here, I had red and purple and pink underwear, you know, and, and dark socks, you know. I was a different kid, you know. Everybody has tidy whities you know. And so I was always different growing up, and and it and it was okay with me. I, I was the kid who was who was voted to go greet the aliens when they landed in high school, you know. <laughs> Yay! So, so I, I I so it's not it's imp- I don't mind being crazy. I don't mind being the class clown. I don't mind being laughed at. But I know what I know, and and I know that it's happening. That all these things that I've been talking about all my life, my friends who've known me all my life, and think thought. You know, explain uh, always. They were explained to my other friends. Oh no, no, really, just keep listening to them. It'll make sense, you know. And but now they're seeing what I'm saying. They have a jump start because they've been hearing it from me all these years. Now it's happening. Right. What I've been saying. It's going on now. Planet X. You know why does the world talk about it, and and we don't know about it? Well, it just today. I think it just came into our solar system, and you know we're we have these Anunnaki. Um, on, on this planet X, and, and it, it doesn't matter if the world is flat or round, something's going to happen, you know. <laughs> right. So, did you did you see the thing about the the, the queen uh, lost it and shape shifted, like in a parade or something, and and thousands of people saw her, and well, then she well, said, uh, "I'm really not human" or something on the the royal website, and people were scared. Yes. Got the screen sh- She said, "I am yeah. not human." I am not human, and and this is we're seeing disclosure. Okay, I even saw David Ike, believe it or not. David Ike, the guy who talks about reptilians, shapeshift on YouTube, and and come out and I'm say that, on YouTube. And he, he was talking. There was I saw this one story where he was running around chasing um, people, and, and and he was acting crazy. But I I didn't see that story again. So you know you never know what. But let me tell you, there's some videos of – just type in shape-shifting aliens or shape-shifting reptilians on YouTube. And look at all those – you know, you see Obama and Hillary and their eyes, you know, they become slits. <laughs> and, and then you see yeah, the scale. What's uh-huh. useful about that is to realize that we all have brain stems and we have reptilian uh, instincts we do. too. Fortunately, These we are, more are percentage in though. higher consciousness. They're yeah, like more than fifty percent, right? And so the you know the, the ultimate need of you go under the reptilian in you is to so that you survive, uh-huh. so that your temperature is regulated, so that your um, uh, copper and manganese basement bases uh, maintain. You know, yeah. so you survive. Yes, That's we, we do have reptilian brains. We have reptilian brains and mammalian brains, and our mammalian brains right. are what. Is really see that's why it's so easy for them to have war and kill everybody. It's because they have reptilian brains. They have no love and compassion. They're cold-hearted, cold-blooded reptilians. Okay, and so it's easy for them to, to do that. But we have hearts. We have a heart chakra. We have a mammalian brain, like the whales and the dolphins, the smartest beings on the planet. You know, dolphins play and have sex. What else is there? You know. And how smart is that? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You know, the dolphins and the whales and and you know why why war why fight why why not vibrate the spider right. frequency? You know I was really lucky in Santa Monica in the 80s. I was swimming in in the ocean and with this with this older friend of mine. She was 60, and we would go out to meet the dolphins, and they would swim underneath us and go. You know, and bombard us with sonar. Very good. And and we were high on their sonar. They were they were raising our spirit. They were accelerating our spiritual advancement and teaching us somehow and transferring something. And it was awesome. And I always knew when they were coming. When I was sleeping on the beach, I'd look and they were swimming. In the morning, they would swim north, and in the evening. Um, they would come down south, and I think they were going to that Malibu. If you look at that Malibu um, temple underneath, that goes in all the way to Arizona. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the, they. I heard that they d- took a submarine all the way to Arizona from uh, Malibu underneath there, but it showed up in the Google Earth or whatever. 
and and there's also a big Buddha head in in uh, Malibu, and and there's some uh, sculptures, and you know they they hide all these pyramids and stuff at military bases in Southern California. There's a big reptilian underground city in L.A. and you know, when I went to UCLA, there was always tunnels and stuff. We'd go explore, and, you know, it was always scary. You know, I knew something was there, and I was like, you know. You Did you know that something. Dr. Lesson went to UCLA as well? You two have that in common. I graduated in 86, I mean, and I stayed there till 92, though, and I was skateboarding and rollerblading. Did you see me? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was there the gener- couple generations I got before. I 57. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm being polite. I'm being polite. No, yeah. no, no. He, but that's interesting. You were in the same energy because that's uh, yeah. There's something about that UCLA that's I uh, there, there this summer just walking around. There's, there's a lot of energy that on that mountain. Yeah, there's a lot of energy on in Westwood Hills. There, it's an awesome place, and you know they. It's Bel Air behind there. You know, that's the best part of Beverly Hills. And, you know, they have the Playboy Mansion there. And, and that's where Reagan had his mansion. You know, he's the first guy when I was uh, in North Campus. North Campus UCLA was where I was, art history and filmmaking. And right wow. behind, in the neighborhood where I was parking, I would skateboard to my car and I'd park in the neighborhood and come up the hill. And Reagan had a house. It was 666. And he's the first guy in history to change his address to 668. <laughs> Instead oh, of six six six. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, whatever. But it's you know, CERN is, is comes to mind, you know, with the six six six, and and because they're symbol for CERN with the C's and the sixes, and oh, it's CERN yeah. it's very interesting, opening up portals and. I heard that I watched a YouTube or something that they recently. Oh. Uh, they opened, they, they pushed it, and they opened the interdimensional portal, and the yeah. lady that was the head of the project uh, dissolved into nothing or was uh-huh. <laughs> in That's the chair. What every, t- every time you see that wormhole open up with that blue mm-hmm. beam, um, that means that they're, they are opening up a portal. And when you see that blue beam, that means they're opening it up from this side. When it just opens mm-hmm. up in the sky... Without the blue beam, that means they're opening it up from that side, wherever, like, they're hey, coming here. Wherever that yeah, is. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting is when they're circular, they're traveling through a wormhole, which is this t- um, time and space. But when it's a rectangle, or, or I mean, when it's a triangle, like in the sun, it's from another time and another space. Another, another. T- I'm, I'm sorry, honey. I'm doing a show. There's none. We're out. <laughs> My wife is out of ketchup. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, uh, um, we. Uh, okay, so you said it's a wormhole. So it's circular. Is is a wormhole? It's a shortcut from one part of the universe to the other. But the triangle ones are the portals. They're they're. They they go to another time and space and another dimension, so that's the difference. And you can tell when these open up because you're, we're seeing things come out of the sun through the triangle. Oh, there's a triangle on the sun. Every every planet has a a portal, and it's triangle shape uh, on the you know the the Merkaba the the sun. And and we mm-hmm. see them come out of the, of the sun. You see the ships coming out of, and whatever. Right. And then you see so also divine beams of light. Wormhole. So yeah, wormholes and portals. I'm saying they're two different things. Portals. Wormholes and portals. I'm just differentiating. It's another dimension. Okay, and, so uh, the wormholes are... The wormholes, the wormholes are, are circular, and they're shortcuts from right. this part of the universe to another part of the universe. Like they bend space, so you take a shortcut through right. one hole right. and through another. Mm-hmm. And then when they're um, geometric shapes, you know, different shapes like triangle, then they're, it's a it's a it's a portal where it's mm-hmm. uh, it's a dimensional rip from another time and space. And so you have to think dimensionally because we're. Not, of course, we're in the third dimension of time. We're pa- we're experiencing time, past, present, and future, from when I started the talking and now. But in the etern- in the higher dimensions, it's an eternal now, and everything exists, and, and we don't experience time in that way. 
So all these uh, dimensions are are overlapping each other, and and they're coming from a higher. See the have you if you remember those Star Trek shows when they were like going slow when they were like in another dimension and then everybody was frozen and they were saying well they're in the third dimension they're moving slow motion and slow you know right you know? right yeah they so have, and it's an, are, Gene, yeah you know, and that's, <laughs> that's what Gene Roddenberry talks about the way uh, when when uh, Aphrodite or Donna would come down among the battling uh, and they would be in slow motion but. Uh, the gods yeah. can move in this other dimensional time. Yeah, exactly. That. And that's a great way to talk, to show it to people so they understand. Because these people are very gifted. The Rod Sterling of of, of the Twilight Zone and Gene Roddenberry mm-hmm. of Star Trek, they were gifted information from, you know, these uh, space technology that we, you know, they say that every year they jump 40 years and I don't know how I, I I I've heard that anything you can imagine they can already do now. They just don't share this That's technology basically too. because it's yeah. it's about control and free energy and and you know we can't be free thinkers with our own because then we don't need them you know and 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 mm-hmm. money it just throws everything off. Just like when the Venusians came to, to you know, Stranger and the Pentagon the movie. Uh, they came and landed at the at the Pentagon, and then the two troopers drove them to the White House. And these va- Venusians, Valiant Thor, who still works for the government, and uh, his uh, his uh, his girlfriend and, and friend, they uh, were they had all the answers to the world problems, energy, free energy, all the cures to disease. But but it wasn't Eisenhower and Nixon that shut him down. It was the CIA that said, hey. You're going to ruin our economy, you know, and, and it's because right. they they want to make money. You know, if, if if people don't get sick in the hospital, they don't make money. They, if everybody was healthy, you know, in China they pay the doctors to keep people healthy. The doctor doesn't work; they pay them to keep stay healthy. You know, <laughs> so we do it backwards here. We pay them when we get sick, and they, so they want us to be sick. So they keep keep paying them because they have to pay their their ex-wife and their and their son's <laughs> education and their condo in Hawaii and you know <laughs> all that stuff yeah yeah so well, so well, they don't share whole this whole technology system. with us yeah so right. it's all it's planned obsolescence supporting the people at the top and not supporting people at the bottom so and, and and all I mean I'm involved are... in a lot of court stuff and it's all about keeping lawyers and judges in in their fancy jobs or these big houses. <laughs> it is. It is because it is. The, the the lie there is common law. See common law. See they trick people into coming into court with all capital letters. But that's your straw man. That's not you. That's the corporation they want you to think that you are, so they can tax you and control you. But they have no jurisdiction over you. See, you have to mm-hmm. you have to learn legal aids. You know they speak legalese. You know they they trick you with words. There's 18 different diction, word definitions of the in Black Law Black's Law Dictionary. And see, all the presidents <laughs> are lawyers for a reason. They're lawyers too for a reason because they it's in words. That's why you have to know numerology and add up the words and know what know what they're saying and mean because they. they if they're doing spells, they're casting spells, and and if you don't understand all the stuff, you don't understand what's happening. You're you're a slave to the system, and you get caught in. Mm-hmm. We and intelligent. My wife's very intelligent, but but you know we're opposite. She doesn't know about these things that I talk about, and she thinks I'm crazy. And but she's a psychologist. <laughs> I think I think she's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, they're the, you know, if you I told her go look up quack in the dictionary. <laughs> so it's it's funny, you know, we we it's just funny how things are, but but when we we have to take responsibility. See, I like to say in this age of technology, remaining ignorant is a choice that we make because it's too easy to do a key, few keystrokes, but you do have to know what a good reference is because you do get enough on your paper if you use WikiLeaks or you know, wiki. <laughs> you know. So you, I mean, you have to you have to have good references and know how to read between the lines. But I like to read the news just to see what they're lying about. You know, and and, and right. what they're pushing. Yeah. 
because the Zika virus has been around since 1947. The Rockefellers own the patent. You can buy it online for $516 freeze-dried or $354 frozen. And I'll give you the website. Wow. It's AT, ATCC.org. And then there's a oh, forward okay. slash. Uh-huh. So I just want people to... Yeah, we don't want Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, why would you want to buy the virus? Exactly. I don't want it. I want to buy Well, it's because I want people to know that they're they're ramping it up. They're trying to use this. They're trying to, to make it up. It, it does. It attacks again. It hijacks your DNA. See? The, it, okay, it, well, I, we're going to go back. The, um, yeah, it, go we're back to that. Here, Eric, I... We're going to, we're sure, going to sure. go round table here and ask questions. Uh, Thank you, yes. Questions, Sasha. Uh, no, but what I just uh, reflecting on is, you know, Henry's story about this uh, fellow, who, uh, the only merchandise he had down in this Latin American uh, uh, town was uh, shoes, and he couldn't figure it out until he put a burrs uh, and planted uh, sticker burrs all over, and everybody bought zapatos. And so I think that what we have is a whole monstrous, uh, monopoly, a uh, set of monopolies like uh, Monsanto and uh, so forth that are just uh, trying to uh, force us to uh, see the problems that they want us to see, have the reactions we uh, they want us to have so that we take the solution, which is give them control yes. over everything. Ask your doctor about... <laughs> yeah. Ask your doctor about, and then you fill in the blank. They want you to, you know, they want you to take this and that, and then you take something for the side effects of that. Right. And they atta- and they attack the women. Look in the women's magazines. They attack the women. When you look at the women's magazines, there are so many ads for medication, and then they they put the ads on during the soap operas, and they target the women, and 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 women want to be their own doctor. You know, they think, oh, I'm a doctor. I'm I'm. I have this. I'm. I think I'm going to take this. You know, I'm not. I'm not stereotyping all women or this or that. Well, they, but I'm they just saying that. They hypnotize. Yeah. With the my my one girlfriend one time, she says I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with me. So she started going on the internet, and she <laughs> she would call me every every other day with a different diagnosis and a different disease, and she kept yeah uh, researching and hypnotizing herself with a different disease. She finally got over that. I said, Why well, you haven't done it? Like any. a hypochondriac. So, yeah. There must be a new word then. I, there must be a new word for hypochondriac for somebody who looks on the internet and has yeah, that. Yeah, I guess she gets. She got the disease of the week, and finally, I think she she moved past it, which very high IQ, so that ability to well, self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. It's self fulfilling. So uh, yeah, so I I told her just shut off, shut off the media. Don't watch. Don't watch anything. Yeah. You're, if you're that easily oh, yeah. influenced, you don't know who you are. But there is a level of constantly being hypnotized by somebody somewhere trying to tell you, you know, who and what you are to find your reality. So you exactly. to find your And it turns out there's a, there's a patent for mind control. You know, you were talking about mind control, Janet. It, it, it's mind control mm-hmm. patent. And it's all plasma screens your TV screens, your mm. telephone screen. All the plasma screens they put everywhere that they, they want you to see, and they're black, you know, because of the black goo, PPAI, mm-hmm. predatory pathogenic artificial intelligence. It's black goo in there, and they Ooh, want to make black goo and see they <laughs> and they control yeah, you. The, the Falklands. Uh, yes. Yeah, the Falklands. Yes, from the Falkland <laughs> Islands. Yes. Tell our listeners about the black goo, Eric, now that you brought it up. What is well, the black goo and why is it uh, controlling us and what's going on? I, I think that some evil aliens shot it on a comet to Earth. And and then it it took it to take over, you know, the planet. With the, you know, in mm-hmm. Iran they say the, the jinn, and they pronounce it jinn, but it's spelled D-G-A-I-N-N. Oh, yeah. D-J-I-N-N, but it's pronounced jinn. And yeah, and they always say it, it could it. be the archons. It Go could ahead. be the, you know, the archons are, are the Anunnaki, and and these Anunnaki reptil they're reptilians, and there's good ones and there's bad ones, 
and and there's good and bad well, black that, and blue. That always confused me. So you're saying I thought the archons were interdimensional. The Anunnaki, they say we are made in their image, so there are statues yeah. where they look human, and then there's reptilians. The, the archons are the white like with says, the black eyes. The white well, skin, they, they look kind of like... Kind of Oh, interdimensional. They don't really how. Well, okay. All, all you have to do they is are, go on they are Google interdimensional. And you they can are interdimensional. Google images. Yeah, and you do. can see what people are saying these things look like. And, and that's exactly. all. Exactly. But there's something there when you say. Well, well these archons, they, they, they live on your being pissed off. They try to get you to be pissed off because they live on that energy of you being ra- rageful, um, uh, mad. And it, it gives right. them power. Okay, that, and that's why they kill people on certain days. You know, you see these false flag operations are certain days, like, uh, right. you know, like the ritual, I and 11. The ritual events. Yeah, they're yeah. ritual days that, that add up to, you know, it's all about numbers. And they they want to, this black goo gets in you with the with the oil, with, that's why they're burning oil in the cars because it's in the oil, the black goo, and and it gets in the air mm-hmm. and we inhale it, and then it gets in the toner, the black toner. You inhale it; it's microfine dust powder, and it gets in the. They put it in the chemtrails. They put it in the screens of the TV. It gets in your mind, and see, you always have to detox uh, um, with it, doing super. Well, if they if they end up controlling us completely and we're just a bunch of Bored, you know, they're not. Destroyed. They, they're not going to have any fun left because there won't be anybody to challenge. Well, there's beautiful people like passion. you. There's beautiful people like like you, Janet and Sasha and Karen, that have great hearts that transmute this shit. You know, and and yeah. you hold your space. You hold your space and you transmute it, and you shine out. When a person is enlightened. You enlighten a million people. You know, you vibrate. Mm-hmm. You know, in Sanskrit, it's called darshan, darshan, or darshan or darshan. And you're touching uh-huh. a, a famous person; it rubs off on you. You know, you 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 go to the holy man; it, it, it you get their vibration. It, it 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 it's infectious in a good way. It 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 raises your level of vibration. You know, that's why it's good. You know, when I went to UCLA, I, I only hung out with the professors and teachers and smart people doing research and I, you know because I understood this concept of, of the vibration and keeping my I always want to keep my vibration high and always in the learning mode you know because mm-hmm. I was there finally they kicked me out because I was I graduated 86 and I stayed there until 92 you know and they said what are you doing <laughs> you know what are you doing here you know I said what's the matter didn't you didn't my check clear you know <laughs> they said what are you doing here you know, I said, I'm learning. You mean you, you were yes. just going into classes and you already had graduated? I was taking classes and learning all my favorite subjects. I said, you, I said, you said, I said, you said I could make my own, my own schedule and and study what I wanted. I said. Uh huh. They said, they said we can we can bring in a freshman and charge them a lot more money. You know, and that's basically it. Turns wow. out that UC is 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 the biggest donors to the Zionist movement. You know, so. They're, they're scary. Well, that's what Sasha did. Didn't you do the same thing, honey? Tell them what you did. Yeah. It's just uh, at UCLA, besides the 20 units that let you take it, no one stops you from walking into any classroom and listening and raising your hand and going to office hours. It just didn't matter. Oh, no, I didn't. Or not. I, I didn't. I, I actually paid and, and paid for six more years and went to class and, and was on the register, like, oh, wow. my name and and say, you know, presence and absent, you know, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I actually attended until 92, you know, and, and uh, so I just, I, I left and went to, I went on a game show, Shop Till You Drop, and I won with my girlfriend, and we had so much fun. We, we, moved, we went a trip to Arizona, so we moved to Arizona, and, and then I saw <laughs> UFOs. I saw UFOs, and I saw magic lightning, and, you know, Arizona is like Mars, you know, it's so like you know that's why Sedona is, is like 
Sidonia. They call it Sedona. It's like Sidonia. You can tell right. the difference between Mars and, and you can actually, there are people living on Mars and it looks like Arizona, okay? So, uh, because we have the Mars Jump Room programs and, you know, Obama was part mm-hmm. of it with his mother and Laura Eisenhower was talking to us about it. And, and you know, you go into a jump room and all of a sudden you're in Mars and, and Mm-hmm. And they and they have the, you know, I remember again. I was lucky, and I, I had Richard Hoagland come to our classroom in the '80s with his book uh, "Face on Mars," and because I had a great art history teacher that had friends at NASA, and he was, says his friends were pissed because the Viking probe found all these pyramids and and sculptures and life on Mars that that they weren't sharing with the public, you know. And there was a mm-hmm. face, a face on Mars, and and later I became friends with Patty Brassard, and she shared with me the the pictures of of the full body, not just the face of Mars, but the full body before they buried it. They tried to hide the face and everything with a bunch of oh. sand, and they blew up, you know. Didn't know that. Put all this, yeah. So it's so I have the picture of of the face on Mars, the body on Mars before it's just the face, you know, when it's buried. Oh, can you send it to so, us? I I can I can I will I will um get friend me on Skype and and I'll because it's on my Skype I think and I'll I'll okay I'll I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll send it to you I'll find it no I'll send it to you on okay. Facebook or or whatever uh, I'll just Excellent. remind me if I forget I'd love to see it. oh yeah okay it's, it's it's so wonderful I'm so lucky I thank God for being lucky and meeting all these people you know during my life meeting the astronauts meeting I went to Switzerland and met. Uh, Billy Meyer in the in the eighties and talked to him. Oh, you're like Forrest Gump. Like yeah, Forrest Gump. You've met everybody. Yeah, definitely. I've heard that before. <laughs> You've and, met us, and we've met you, so we're lucky too. <laughs> oh, it was lucky meeting you guys. You you guys are awesome. And 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 when I learned that Sasha knows what he knows about the Anunnaki, when I was first learning about it, I was so impressed, and I had to, you know, he he's. You know, he did a lot of great, and and that's where it's important to start. You know, uh, to see what, because all these bearded gods, they're the bearded gods that are mm-hmm. showing up. You know, and, and so who's, when you look who's at, running the world uh, from your perspective, Eric? Who's well, the if, you, if you listen to, well, they think they are it's, the tall whites. The they're they're tall whites. Like Elizabeth the, and all those people over there in England. They're the reptilian. And well, there's, Vladimir, are Vladimir they? Are they Putin reptilian? said they are reptilian, and and they are Anunnaki, and they are tall white, and they, they're. Vladimir Putin came out and said that the world leaders are reptilian. Okay, they're they're Did shape-shifting he reptilians. He he said Is that. Is he a reptilian as well? Is he reptilian as well? I don't I don't Putin. think so. Putin wanted them? I, I don't think so, as much as we are. But, no, I think Putin is good, is doing good. for. I think he was taken by the the spiritual aliens, and the advanced spiritual ones, and schooled. I think they took him for a couple of weeks and, and really schooled him. I think he's doing great stuff. He's, he's opening the east of Russia and giving away free land to people. And and in America, we're so you know, Bureau somebody, of Land Management stealing the land from people. <laughs> so, so how does huh? somebody like that get to power? To, to me, it seems like you know anybody that's at that level of power is corrupt on some level. They're, it's well, really impossible to get to that level without being co-opted. They, they're royalty. Some way, it ter- if you go to YouTube again and type in "one family, mm-hmm. one rule, one bloodline." One family, mm-hmm. one rule, one bloodline. You see that okay. from, you hear it. You hear it from the horse's mouth that they're all related. Bush is related to Cheney, right. related to Obama, related to the Queen of England, Vlad the Impaler. They based Dracula on William of Orange, Charlemagne. You know all these. They're all related. It turns out that these are the same people. When Jesus got pissed off in the temple, those are the same thirteen families in the temple. That made the shekel, the money, and mm-hmm. and went to Europe to become kings, and came to America to become presidents. That's how they've been doing it. They've been been the royalty. So who's doing Jesus? It. 
Who's Jesus? That's what, what that, really is Jesus? Exactly. We'll see Jesus. What do you think? I would say, I, I, I like to, I, I like, I'm, I'm curious who Jesus is, okay? Because I think he's, it, it works on many different levels for me. I know that there's a divine space being that's Jesus, okay, that's mm-hmm. still around. Then I know that there was a man we called Jesus. But see, when I studied comparative religion at UCLA, there was a problem with the word Jesus because there's a J in Jesus, and there was no J in the English language until, you know, four six hundred. Okay, so his name could have mm-hmm. been Jesus. You know, it had to be maybe Emmanuel, and maybe he was hanging well, out with the scene. I wonder why they changed it to a J and what the J means, because I'm a J on that, and there's J, a lot of well, J's J is on. Well, J is an important language. Because, J is an important letter, because letter, right. J is the name of the alien they had at Roswell. Okay, J, 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 J-Rod. J-Rod, yeah. you know, and and I know an alien that that came to that visits me every now and then at the at the conferences, and and his name is J, and I didn't think anything of it, and he was always wearing a ski cap, you know, and mm-hmm. and then later I saw him shape shift. So this is a like, this is a, uh, a an, an extraterrestrial that visits you at conferences. And yes. you see him as a human? And he, I and see how do you know he's extraterrestrial? Because I saw him shift one day. And I said, okay. holy shit, you're an alien. And, and we smiled and hugged. <laughs> you know, and, and then I realized we weren't talking ever. We were always communicating telepathically. Uh, telepathic. <laughs> so, was you know, he at so, any of the conferences that we were at together? I saw him at Contact in the Desert. Yes, he was. He was at the conferences with us. And I'll point him out to you. If you if I I'd when like I see you see again, this person. he's a very right. interesting guy, and and he hasn't showed up the last two times, the last two conferences he didn't show up because maybe I'm talking too much about him, um, but mm, yeah. but he uh, and then he had a friend who had a last name, but her last name was Frisbee, and then I realized Frisbee, <laughs> it's like a flight <laughs> club, and they're both short, they both look like they're ancient. Um, Tibetans, you know, uh, the way they look, ancient Tibetans. But then when I see their, when they shift, the skull is heart-shaped. Like there's a big cleft down the middle, and it's like bulbous. So, and it reminded me of of when Spock was hiding his ears with a ski cap. This guy, when I saw him shape-shift, I was wondering why he had a ski cap on, a wool ski cap in the hot desert, a contact in the desert, you know. And he he wanted to go to the pool. And That's finally, he took it off. Way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't even think about it. Okay, I didn't even think about it. It's funny. Until until later, then it came to me. I said, "Whoa!" But it's imp- it, the the point I'm trying to make is there are advanced beings here that they've been following the prime mm-hmm. directive, not interfering with the life of the planet, because we have to ask for their help. We have to ask for them to interfere and put these guys in jail. And 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 they're seeing that we want that now, and, and it's happening. They're they're catching these people, and and got the they already have the top ones. And so are we good going? Track. Is that the is that the best plan? Is to just take all these people and put them in a jail somewhere? I mean, uh, no, to no, me, this no. whole past play no that good. we've been acting out jail for no good. you know millennia is uh, I, a co-creation. I don't think that's what. I don't think Sweden has jails anymore, okay? Because they—that's how uh-huh. efficient they are, okay? That's just—I I just want to give a, a, a. So what? Do, what do we do with these? Um, I think that they—they they they give them another chance. They educate other. them. Extra love. How do we educate them when they think they know it all? What, what happens? They, they have to start you know, over at a lower dimension. They have to you, start over. you have to have another chance and and relearn. You give them. The, these people need extra love. They need extra love. They need to be to be bathed in the light of love and, and experience mm-hmm. it. Because anything else, you know, once you drive a Rolls Royce or a Bentley, you know, every other car, any other car you drive is going to be, you know, you can balance a nickel on the engine and start it. And they use the Rolls Royce engines for planes, you know, and and mm-hmm. like the like those Malaysian planes that got lost, you know, they bullshit. They had chips on they had uh, transponders on them they could have found them you know if they wanted but right so uh, but these but i'm saying once you experience 
something so good, you don't want anything else, you know. I'm Norwegian. I grew up in Norway. I had shrimp. I, anything else, is, I had the best shrimp. Now it's all, I grew up in Iran. They had the best caviar. Now everything else is just junk, you know, to me. You know, mm-hmm. Once you have the best, you don't want to have anything else, you know. And and it's like that with love and compassion. You know, once you experience a beautiful, loving relationship and a compassion and, and you know, you well, why would you want to do anything else? Why would you want to lower right. your vibration, get sick and, and have a low vibration? Because magic happens when you're, when you're feeling good and laughing, and, and that's when the magic happens. So we're, we're in this world right now where we're heading into an election. We have stories of, you know, uh-huh. this, uh, pending global economic collapse and all the drama and uh-huh. the trauma. And, and you were saying the false flag, you don't even think the yeah. elections are going to happen. Uh, let's put all it's that all about 25 it's minutes on the table here. Um, okay, well, quickly. Talk to you any comments, and then we'll, have, we'll pass it back to. Okay, he's sure. passing. Uh, Karen, do you have any comments or, or things in them? Are you yeah, still there, Karen? On what, yeah, on what Eric was just talking about, these people. Um, these people um, are, they're not okay. They're not okay because they have a, a, an important part of the experience of being human literally completely missing from their life, and that's right. empathy. It, these their are DNA, handicapped even, people. They are, are disabled people. Now, we wouldn't think of that because they're, you know, getting all the top positions in right. uh, governments and corporations and all, But and, and they think of themselves very highly, but right. honestly, they're not actually fully human. They're, they're something broken there, right? Yes. And the, the yes. thing that is, the part of humanity that's going to move on and ascend is the part that has the, the empathy and has got the full uh-huh. spectrum human emotions. And even though these people are cruel, and why it sounds crazy, like why would we make a cruel person experience, you know, uh, empathy or love, is that's part of their experience. Their experience is to take that cold-blooded, uh, you know, Experience and they're slapping us against uh, other point. beings that are lo- are in in the space of love, yes. and they think we're stupid. They think yes. we're stupid. Like I can't believe those people let us run over and then like that. Right. But that's for now. That's not forever. That's that's okay. for right now as we have the mix, right? And okay, they're going to realize how bankrupt they are, right? L- let how me explain that quickly. Are. Let me just explain that point quickly. We are our worst enemies. Okay. They, they, uh, they changed. They dumbed themselves down on purpose. They took their DNA strands, and they went down from like twelve to, to three, I think. And that extra strand they have gives them that shape shifting qualities, but it makes them better than us with the two double helix structure. But the sun activated our DNA to be higher frequency vibration, so we're having the more strands. So we're raising our level to theirs, but but really beyond, because we have that mammalian brain and the ability with the heart to love. The heart chakra is very powerful. It's a Taurus. It's like a Metatron's uh, uh, Merkaba, you know, in our body. It, 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 it's a union of positive male and female triangles and, and, and bursting with energy. We're very powerful if we vibrate this, if we cultivate our life force and 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 resonate this higher frequency vibration, we 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 vibrate the shit out of them. We transmute all the bad energies, and and they they dumb themselves down on purpose so they could contr- to stay there. They have to raise they have to raise their vibration, and they're going to be given another chance to get their strands back. There are good reptilians too. There are good dragons too. You know, Puff the Magic Dragon. He's a good dragon. You know, and he was a good <laughs> dragon. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's good dragons like Smog and and you know t- t- and you meet them was in the Smog fairy tale. Smog a good dragon. <laughs> oh, he was a bad dragon. Was Smog well, he was bad. He was bad. he was bad, but he became good in the end, didn't he? No, oh, he got. I shot. remember. <laughs> oh, he got, he got shot, shot yeah. by an arrow. <laughs> I guess he got shot by an. He got killed by an arrow through the the little scale that came off. But I like to right. think that oh, he, right. he, you know, because they found, the, you know, the whole 
But I like to, in my mind, I always make it good, see. And that's the important thing <laughs> is always switch it to good. You know, that, that it was good that he died because then he realized. See, I always say my, my grandpa, he was an atheist till he died. And then he saw the light, mm-hmm. you know. And then he became, you know, he was very, I think about grandpa every day. He was a captain of a ship in the Norwegian fleet. So he taught mm-hmm. me. I, I learned, I want to share one thing and then you can move yeah, on after sorry. that. But uh, I do automatic writing. I learn a lot from that. And one oh, of the good. things that I wrote out was, uh, you know, a different division than maybe light and dark or evil and good was, um, it was called the owl and the owlet, O-W-L and O-W-L-E-T-T, uh, E-T-T, okay. So it's okay. like this, one who loves, so that's that universal love consciousness. And then part of the God self, like, decided to forget that. So it became the owlet or the baby owl. One who loves experiences truth and that's that is a chance for part of the god self or the god consciousness to experience being loved and it doesn't have to be light and dark it doesn't have to be good or bad it's it's part of ourselves that forgot it's a part of ourselves that we forgot what love really is and so that's that's another side of that is that really those negative sides of us is being loved and experiencing truth to bring it back up into awareness Look at it numerolo- numerologically. Okay, look at it with numbers. When you're when you're loving something, you're loving something else, or or you're loving. I mean, you're when you're not loving yourself, you're loving something else, which is a split. You're creating a duality, a dichotomy. So if you're loving God, you're not uniting with God, becoming one with God. So when you're in Iran, in the they say that. The devil loved God too much and created a split, and, and from God. So, and, so he was, and then, and then, see, Lucifer was a was a, a light a light being. He's a light bearer, you know, bear a bearer of light is is Lucifer. Mm-hmm. That's what it means. And how can that be? You know, if the, the, if the devil is darkness, you know, and. So there is a duality dichotomy split. Isn't that all just the warping of the Anunnaki tells that the the uh, uh-huh. the devil, the Satan, just meant the adversary? That's what my my uh-huh. is showing. It's that you know they, all these terms uh-huh. are just kind of warping of of the brother and sister. I mean the uh, two brothers being in right. opposition of each other. Right. And so you know. Satan and the devil—they're just. Uh, that's just me. Yeah. I, I think it's just—it's it, just um, the cosmic unfolding, like a rose, like a what do you call that? Uh, the phi, the um, Mandelbrot set, and fractals, and how they go, um, how everything grows in a fractal-like way. So you're starting with one cell, then it splits. So you have one. You have zero from nothing. Then you have one. You get one plus one is two. Then you take the number before and you add it. So two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. And then five, you you, add, you keep going. Five and three is eight. Eight and five is 13. Then you're getting the Fibonacci sequence, and you're getting a spiral. See? And you're just going in a spiral. You're moving away from unity, and then it goes back to everything. Everything goes. Everything is connected and goes back to one, and it's all related. So, whatever level you're at, you, you can recognize that and, and shift where you want. You know. So I, I think we're shifting into this thousand-year golden cycle of of love, and and we're about to experience a new. Age, where the change of of cycles in the Kali Yuga and the, the Kali, the, the, yeah, the, the you know they they have all these different cycles that and we're coming into a new the the Aquarian you know this is Aquarian radio we're coming into the age of right. Aquarius you know we're in the age right. of Aquarius and and this is it we're on Aquarian radio and and this is a you know, this is it. This is we're not in the dawning of of <laughs> we're this is it. We're and we are it. We're the ones we've been waiting for. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> You're right, and, great. <laughs> and so rejoice and it's about to be good. It 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 always people always get pissed off before they make a shift in conf- consciousness because they have to rethink everything that they knew and they get pissed off because they thought it was this way and now it's this way and and then they relax and they're happy because they realize.
realize, you know, the beauty of, you know, when you realize how everything is, and, you know, the the Buddha got pissed when he left the temple. He 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 was upset and he had compassion and and he was he he everything was good in the palace. Then he saw suffering and and people hungry, didn't have money and and you know he 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 took off his gold you know earrings and and they have a big hole left a big hole in his ears because they were so heavy. And then people do the same thing now, but they don't really know what it means. You know, they put these big holes in their head and pierce their bodies. But they're not. They don't have the the why they're doing this, or they don't know. You know what we're seeing of everything coming a full cycle always, going in cycles, and it's a new good. It's a time. It's a good time to be. Okay, what happens mm-hmm. here on Earth affects the rest of the universe. This is a cosmic time in space and time and everything. What happens here? All the timelines. Right now, we're visualizing. Have you heard of this mandala effect? I haven't gone and checked my movies, but they're telling me that famous lines in the movie have changed. Like you're seeing the scarecrow with a gun now and things. I have to go back and look at my old movies. I know. That's what I'm saying. And and like Star Wars, you know, when he says, I am your father. What's happening is timelines are merging. All these different timelines are merging now, and it's shifting the what we have already. So I, I, I asked my friend who was describing this to me, I said, you're saying that if I go in my boxes and look at one of my old movies, it's going to be changed? It's changed? And they said, yeah. So all of you, check this out, okay? <laughs> we are merging. We're in a new time, a new space. Well, I actually different energies. the different timelines when I was four and I was on – Board the mothership, and as soon as I was on board the mothership, I wasn't four anymore. I was my eternal self, and I had yes. the memory of who I am and the, and the grand design of the, the totality of existence. The and they showed me twenty-four different possible possible future histories for you know where where basically I could go, and I could take whoever right. walked with me in the continuum, and, and there were twelve dark and twelve light. Um, so when you're saying this mandala effect and that the timelines are merging, one of the things they told me was pay attention that uh, the first movie you saw was Hercules Unchained, but in this timeline it was Hercules that I saw. So they, oh, and they wow. go, what? Who cares? But now wow. I'm talking about the mandala effect. Yeah, That's very important. Things yeah, and it, and, I, and I put it in my uh, my presentation, and, uh, and we were just going, why should I have that in there? And I, I kept saying, well, it's very important to pay attention to the different little subtle differences of the timeline. So you're yes. saying if we went back and watched Wizard of Oz, which I have seen, this yes. is the human Jan itself. We used to watch it back in, I was born in 54, so a very common right. annual event was to watch the Wizard of Oz. Right. And year after year after year you would watch it and that's why you wanted to have a color T V. Because yeah. it starts out black and white and you're gonna see it shift. Right. So you're right. saying that the Wizard of Oz has the the the, who the scarecrow <laughs> packing a pistol. Uh, a, okay. Let's I'm like this what? Out. I, I said <laughs> what? <laughs> I have to see it for myself, but that's what happens that. when the timelines merge. You were getting all these different histories of the way things happen differently into our timeline too, and but we're still remembering. See, when you're in these higher dimensions, when you were in that higher dimension, you re- realized it was different that you were in a different place, and you had memory of the past way it was. And see, we're going to have this. See, when you die and you come back, we always are. They take this memory from us, but we're going to have this memory of all the timelines and all the things. We will have, uh, you know, omnipresent um, consciousness. I have, I have to ask the question: Did they change the song? If I only had a gun, I just need to know. <laughs> well, I'm looking at. I'm looking I at I watch these things on YouTube. <laughs> wow. I'm looking at this thing here and it says 
Mondellas are too new to Scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz carried a gun. It's right here on YouTube. I, oh, I, my I goodness. Wizard and I of Oz that that would have made that anything. movie. The movie would have been so much out. shorter if he would have just shot the witch. There you go. You know, <laughs> there's a 10-minute it, movie right there. <laughs> oh that's God. why I love it. People have to do their own homework and come to their realization themselves. Nobody can teach somebody else. Everybody has to. You know, I can stand. I could talk about sex, but it's not like having it. You know, it's 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 much better to have it than talk about it, and and especially if you've never experienced it. So it's an excellent example because. We have to. We're the best. The best way to learn is from your own experience. And I want people right. to go not believe anything we've talked about. I know we all sound crazy, but don't believe anything we're saying. <laughs> and go do your homework and find out what we're saying. It, that there's some. It holds some water. It holds some weight. Uh, how about Snow White said uh, the queen, the evil queen, says magic mirror on the wall. Right. No, right. Not Instead not of mirror, mirror, mirror on, on the, the wall. wall. That was the other I mean, one. every little girl my age during that era would pretend to be the mirror, queen. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Okay, Who's you the know, fairest just, of them all? Right. And Magic Mirror, wait, I played it over and over and over again, that video, because I was freaked right. out. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we would say it when we looked in the mirror as a kid, you know, or whatever. Just hoping yes, that the face would be there. Yeah. Yeah, and also, uh, now here's one that also came up for people who study the Bible. Now they're having changes in the Bible text uh, from the lion lays down with the lamb to being the wolf lays down with the lamb, a few things like yeah. that. And, well, that's, and, that's what's happening now. <laughs> yeah, which is a lot more scarier on a whole different level for certain people who are people of yeah. the book, you know, and, that's, and, and I respect yeah. that. But it's just that you got, the, the book was talking about spirituality that you couldn't put in a book. And so if the book gets messed up, you still have your, that underlying spirituality you can still reach for. We, we've got to learn that our, whatever we think is real, people are so materialistic, and they say, oh, you've got to show me, you've got to prove this to me. And right. the fact that if this is all that changeable, because it's a quantum hologram, right? If it's that changeable, then you better be in touch with something that's even more spectacularly beautiful and real than what we even see in front of our own eyes or what we experience every day, right? And and when you experience these higher dimensions of love and vibration, you're seeing colors that you've never seen before. You're experiencing feelings you've never felt before. It's such a beautiful thing that how can anything else compare you know, once, like I said, once you dr- drive a Rolls or, or a Bentley, you know, you're, you're, it's hard to drive another car and not have that same feeling, you know, that you're – or or, or European cars. On the, you know, I drove on the Autobahn at 200 miles per hour, and when you slow down to 80, it looks like you can open the door and jump out, okay? But, you, of oh, course, wow. you know you can't. You can't do that, you know? But you drive an American car at 200 miles per hour, if you can get them to go that fast, they rattle and shake and – it's a world of a difference. Those cars are built differently to go fast and and don't rattle. They have high high rated speed tires and V rated tires and you know. So we have to make our bodies like a high speed car. We have to do meditation. We have to do superfood. We have to do um, raw food. We have to you know. I talk about urine therapy. That's the secret of every mystery school is the urine therapy. It does the stem cells in urea, regenerating everything. That's how Dr. Brzezinski does it with his antineoplastons. He's using the, the stem cells in urea. And, and even I tell people the porta potties, they have a little filter in the piss pot on the side. And then they take that filter of all the piss, the men are pissing on the side, and they sell it, the filter to the, the cosmetic factory to put in the creams for the faces and stuff. You know, so we're not being told in the future we'll be paid for it, you know. But but we're not learning these. We don't know these things, and and we and we're taken advantage of. And if you're not careful, you 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 get put. You know, you have to go pay a doctor uh, money and get prescriptions. And, and yeah, <laughs> my wife's a cheerleader for, for the pharmaceuticals. <laughs> we've got six yeah. minutes. Uh, so tell your wife okay, we'll wrap it up. What, when you're what, done. <laughs> yeah, what, yes. 
What would you, what did you like about? Oh, I could always come back and talk about you know all these things. Yeah, I love we all these topics. Have you back Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done. Okay, yes. I'll, I think Sasha left because he came up the hill and he was he must have walked or somehow I don't know how he got home, but he he went to he was, he fell asleep so he had to, to rest. I, I, I love Sasha. We did the last show. We did one. We did one on this Aquarian Radio. Uh huh. I, I think we did a show. Maybe yeah. It was, Dr. Robert Newton. I, didn't we? Already, I think I already did a show with without. It wasn't. It wasn't you though. I think it was with Sasha. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't knows? remember. We've done not over a, a thousand shows now. We. It's really wow. hard to remember it all. Yeah, I was just figuring it, it out. It was a while like, ago. Yeah, we've done about a thousand shows, and we're we're going strong. We do uh, three to five shows a week, and and then we. Um, we're guesting on other shows. I think something is really happening that this is going on. That people are talking about it, and this is going out yeah. into the the metacosmic void and the uh, what they call that, the akashic records, and, yeah. and the this com- these conversations are shifting consciousness and reality. So don't think we're doing nothing. We're actually oh no, I know, I know. You, you, you guys are awesome. You, uh, putting it out there. When, when you when you talk about these things, like it, 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 what we're doing is exactly that. It, you're we're activating. We're it, it's it's activation energy that ignites. It's a spark that that starts the the process, and and it does mm-hmm. work. And you can see it. It's there's no doubt about it. What, what's your so you've had this theme? What, what, do you have a theme or or what's your uh, mission of your of your show, you you can feel it. You can feel it. You know, having doing all these shows, you can feel that the energy is changing now, and that something's going on. And, and, and well, you know, it, my theme is, uh, you know, there's no true altruism. I really would like to see a planet of peace that's free from war, that where every person has their basic needs met at the very, very least. For, Food and water, and, and that we clean up the environment, and that we honor Gaia, our beloved Mother, and we yeah. honor consciousness and all beings, and we uh, recognize the extraterrestrial, alien, interdimensional presence, and that we're not alone in the cosmos, and all uh, that we create a conscious, civilized civilization that rises be uh, beyond this level zero civilization that we currently have, which is very fresh. It gets more and more frustrating every day for me. And I'm bored with the world. Hang in there. I'm tired of violence. And Hang like, in there. Come on. And it's I'm going to have to contact me, experience it's or I've been happen. having experiences all my life and before. And I remember who I am. I am extra in human form, as are we all. <laughs> We're all yes. multi dimensional beings having simultaneous incarnations in many levels and, and vibratory frequencies and dimensions. And so. That's what my goal is. Um, and Karen is here, and we lost, we lost her. Her phone gives out at the end of the show. I don't know what happened. Uh-huh. And uh, I have other guest uh, speakers, uh, guest hosts, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. What's your mission in doing this work? And, uh, we have my, my answer to all this is education, is doing these conferences. My, as I said before, I, I'm a speaker and MC. And then I, I make up panels, and I choose the topics, and I help. You know, I, when I met him, I kept meeting with Saeed many times. And, and when uh-huh. I was working for the government, he kept trying to get me to come and speak for him. And he didn't realize that it was the same guy he kept meeting. meeting. See, I Googled 11.11. I was born at 11.11 p.m., and I, and I saw his website, alienshift.com, because he has an 11.11 link. And then so I met him, and I saw he's running, and we started talking. And I saw he was doing great shows and bringing all these great people. And so I started saying, well, talk about fluoride. Talk about aspartame. Talk about um, depleted uranium. Talk about – and then he – and then he liked me. He kept trying to get me to come and talk on the shows. Finally, I did. When I did, we laughed because he's the same guy. We kept meeting each other four or five times before. <laughs> we, I just didn't know his, his, that was his name, you know. So my mission yeah. is just educating the public about our higher selves that we we are we have to become. We my name means giver of love and knowledge, Dadmer. 
God means gave, and Mer is an ancient word for love and knowledge and the moon. And and I'm here. I came back here to help with the shift. I'm I'm a star right. seed because I was born 1111, and, and and I've always been different, and I and I've known it. And and I I don't mind being called crazy, and and I'm confident in myself, and I know. And it comes easy for me to figure out puzzles, and and I did the most of everything in presidential physical fitness patch. I I went to the three top martial art academies, and studied you know with the best people, and and you know I I I wanted to I knew that I had to do something here, and and it's important for me to set an example for people or help people. You know, hold the door open for us to all go through the door and make the shift to this new dimension. Uh, uh, that you say that this new paradigm where it's considerate and love and you know <laughs> right. Well, we're all here, but we are at least we're still recording for a few minutes in the archives. But I do want to thank you, Eric, for coming on our show today. It's been a lot of fun. We'll oh, have to do it thank again. You. Um, thank, thank you, Janet, for asking me. You're such a beautiful, Tasha. loving person. I can't wait to see you again. I don't know if I got the answer when your next conference is that you're doing with Saeed David Farman. Do you it's know in when September. Going to be? I have the I have the sheet right here. Just go to 5devents.com. We're going to be in Berkeley. Um, my poster oh, there. Berkeley. And and we did it again. We bought another day. It was supposed to be the 16th, 17th, and 18th, but we bought another day, and now we're we're doing it. Uh, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. So 15th yeah, through the 18th, please. four days. He wanted to buy another day and make it five days again. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, well, let's just do it four days. So we well, we have a lot of speakers. The, uh, the link to the, send me the link to the uh, website or whatever it is where you have this poster or send me the poster, and I'll put it up on my website when it's back up and running. And so that's in September. Okay. We may yeah, we may poster. be on the mainland. We may be on the mainland at that time. You have, uh, you have an open invitation. You have an open invitation. Whenever you. you guys, yeah, please. Um, and and well, then also, I'm doing. Get a song and, to present. We'd love to do that. Yeah. In August, I'm doing. Shred ourselves. Go ahead. Uh, August, I'm doing uh, awarenessproduction.com. I'm the host of the Northern California MUFON. Um, uh, 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 MC the, of the MUFON in the Northern California, and w- with Javier Sandoval, and I'm working with wonderful oh, uh, Lori McDonald, and she's my friend and neighbor down the street, and we work w- with a paranormal psychic group. I'll be with Lori in on Discovery Channel this winter. I'll give you, I'll tell you when that's on. Um, t- talking about uh, experiencing experiencers of UFO events. And and then I'll be doing uh, some other conferences, uh, sound healing conferences and, and ascension conferences. I'm trying to do everything I can just to keep getting the message out of, of the same message and working with my friends that I resonate with, like James Gilliland and Laura Eisenhower. And, and you know, I, I love... I love people that speak from their heart and and not scared to speak the truth, and and also God bless Max Spears, um, the super soldier who just died this last weekend, and I want to yeah. send out spec- I want to send out extra love to Ra- um, Sarah Rachel Adams that it was just she, she's been so sad and, and is healing, and Aww. and just uh and I just uh. You know, th- I thank him for bringing out all the information he did. Although he had a terrible job, you know, he realized, and 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 with the help of Sarah, I'm sure he he vibrated a higher frequency and and realized, you know, woke up to all this and wanted to share, you know, with the public, you know, what what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I, I I feel that, you know, I thank God that I didn't get into some a super soldier program, you know, because definitely. I was asked and and had the you know walk in ability just to walk in and not be trained, and but they, but see they put these guys in and they 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 terrorize them as kids and and you know to get them to split their personality so they can control them and, and I'm, a, right. I'm a little harder I'm a little harder to control, <laughs> uh, or maybe I think I am who knows maybe I am a robot. You are. <laughs> But, well, but thank you I for think, having uh, me on your show. Air, so you're, yeah, 
Yeah, we're really glad we had you on the show, and we'll have you back again. And I'm going to play our exit music because I think we're off the air anyway. I'm not sure 100% if we'll be recorded or not, but just in case. Uh, much love and blessings and aloha, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Aloha. Mahalo. Have you heard? Metro by T-Mobile now includes Amazon Prime. Yes, enjoy the best of shopping and entertainment, movies, TV shows, music, free shipping, and much more. All included for just $40 per line for three lines. All on the T-Mobile network. Discover the smarter way. Metro by T-Mobile. That's genius. One offer per account. Offer subject to change. Twelve ninety nine per month value. Offer valid for new Amazon Prime members. Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus some T-Mobile customers. Video at 480p. Capable device required. See store for details and terms and conditions.